Are you trying to catch a vision for your business? By the time we're done today, you're gonna have a lot more clarity. First, we're gonna discuss how mindless daydreaming may be your best friend. Next, we'll look at the power of writing down your goals. And then lastly, we'll uncover what kind of research should be done before growing or expanding your business. You ready to get started? Let's go. So I started off by saying that we would talk about how mindless daydreaming may be one of your best friends. And I'm gonna share a little bit of a personal story on how I got to where I'm at right now, which kind of proves that point. So once upon a time, I worked in corporate America and I worked in an environment that was a little toxic, uh, but I was over my department. I loved the people that worked for me. and I was really, really good at my job. But I remember this one particular weekend, I was manager on duty. So I worked in a hotel and in a hotel when you're in management, um, at least once or twice a year, you have to be the acting general manager on a weekend because the general manager can't work every day of the week. So you're basically locked in the hotel from Friday night to Sunday afternoon because you're acting as GM. If anyone needs you, you're the one there. And so this one particular weekend, I'm sitting in my room. And if I can be honest with you, I was a little sad because again, I loved what I did, but the environment was extremely toxic by anyone's standards. And I remember just thinking to myself, you know, this is something I worked very hard for to be in that position at such a young age to oversee a department. I worked hard through school scholarships. I did all the right things. And here I was unhappy. And I thought to myself, well, if you could do anything you wanted, Crystal, what would it be? And believe it or not, I had never, ever, ever given myself permission to have that thought post college. It wasn't even anything I thought about. And so I grabbed a little hotel notepad. You know, they have those on the side tables with the little pen. And I wrote down three things. The first thing I wrote down is I wanna travel the world, I wanna help people with their businesses, and I wanna write a book. That was it, I just wrote that down. And I was like, huh. Now what you'd have to know is while yes, you're watching this YouTube video right now, when I tell you that those goals were laughable at the time, there was nothing in my life that would've made me think that I could even consider those things. But that was the beginning of me starting to think about what I'd want in a business. And then all of a sudden, you know, sometimes during lunch, I had this habit of going to my car sometimes and eating lunch just so I could kind of reset for the day because I mentioned the environment was nutty. And sometimes just these thoughts would be downloaded. Well, what if you had this kind of business and you could help by doing this? And I would just start streaming them down. It was just streams of consciousness. I'd start writing them down. So many business owners I know that I'm good friends with have similar stories where just these ideas started to come at random times. Some of them, it's every time they get in the shower. So they actually keep a notebook nearby so that they can just reach out of the shower and write or do whatever they have to do. So sometimes just having space and allowing yourself to daydream is an excellent first step. And I'll share with you, it was only a matter of a few months later from when I wrote that down that I actually quit my job and started my first business. And it was an incredible move, but it started by me just giving myself permission to dream. So after dreaming, and I hinted at this, do ensure that you're writing down your ideas. Don't let them just come and go. Now you might be thinking, what if I'm in a car? No, do not start writing while you're driving. That's dangerous. I didn't tell you to do that. What you can do is, okay, Google, open voice notes. Okay, Siri, open voice notes, whatever that is. I love how my, my phone thinks I'm talking to it right now. But as you're having it record those voice notes, you can always go back to them later. The point is we wanna record your thoughts because some of those thoughts are going to be juicy and extremely helpful in helping you start your business later. The next step for starting up a business is research, research, research. It's time for you to spend some time in the library, buying books, asking questions, reading periodicals. You need to understand your business, how it would run, you need to understand the customers that you potentially have, if there is a need for what you're offering, how much competition you have. There's so much information that needs to be gathered. Now I'll share that after I quit my job and I went home that day after I quit, I immediately went to the library the first morning. I woke up and it was like, now what do you do? And it was like, something just said library. So I went to the library and I probably checked out about eight books. At that point in time, I was devouring probably two to three books a day. And then I'd go back to the library and swap them out and get more business books and get more industry related books. And I was just a sponge and I'd go on social media to kind of see what was happening. It's imperative that you research so that you're not wasting time on things that aren't going to be fruitful for your business. We're gonna pause for just a quick second. I have some more juicy tips for you. 
But first, if you have anybody in your life that you know is thinking about starting a business, maybe they're a little scared, they don't know what to do, why not share this video with them? Sharing is caring. Take a second, hit that share button. All right, so the next step on this journey to starting a business is one that not very sexy, but very true, and that is be prepared to sacrifice. If you really want a business, there's going to be times where you're gonna to have to sacrifice maybe some of the luxuries that you enjoy so that you can fund the business. So for me, I went from shopping at uh, Whole Foods at the time before Amazon owned it when it was fancy, to shopping at the local grocer, right? Everything I did was much more part down and less expensive because I needed the money for my business. I didn't wanna get a loan, that's my path, I'm not saying it has to be your path, and so I had to fund my own business. I also had to sacrifice sleep and a great deal of time. Now I'm not saying, I'm not one of those people that says, you know, you, you sleep when you die, you rest when you die. Not that. But there are times in the beginning where you're really having to give much more energy. It's almost like when you give birth to a baby. You're going to have some sleepless nights for a while until you get this baby on a schedule, till you get it strong enough to be able to hold through the night. Your business is very similar. It's like birthing a baby, hopefully without the same amount of pain. But maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Depends on your business, I guess, right? You're also going to have to sacrifice potentially time with family. And you have to think about what that means for you and if it's worth it. And you have to think about who your partner is as well and if they'll support it. Now, in my case, I was very, very fortunate. When I started my business, I was not yet married. I was dating an amazing man who had just left his job months before I did to start his own business. And so even though we weren't cohabitating, we weren't in the same house together, he was extremely supportive and he understood why sometimes I had to focus on my business and we couldn't always spend time together. And I understood why he had to sometimes focus on his business and we couldn't always spend time together. Sometimes he would miss holidays because he started a photography business. And I'm proud to say we actually are married now. And it's interesting, we still have these same patterns. Some holidays, he's shooting. Sometimes on our anniversary or Valentine's Day, he's like, oh, I've, I've got an offer for a wedding. And I always tell him, take it. We'll celebrate the day before or after. And with my speaking engagements and the amount of travel that I do, I miss a lot of little things too. But in my husband, I have a partner that understands. I say all that to say we don't all have the same type of partners. So as you're sacrificing time with family, you have to ensure that you have a partner that understands. If not, entrepreneurship may not be for you or maybe the type of business you're looking to start is a little more than you can handle at this time. So now that you know you're ready to move forward, you know that you have the support, you're willing to make the sacrifice, you want to find a community of like-minded people. Now, these might be people in your own industry. These might be just general business owners. You might be becoming acclimated to the general business environment in your community. So you join some clubs around that. But you want to make sure that you're around people who understand what it means to create a business because it is a very different mindset from people that actually go to a job. And it's not a better mindset or a worse mindset. You just have to look at the world a little bit differently. And there are times where there's things that are going to bother you or you don't understand that people that work a standard job will not be able to relate to. So having a community of people that understand is truly important. So the next piece is actually do the necessary work. Notice I said necessary. In the very beginning, depending on the kind of business you're doing, you might be doing a lot more functions than you should be doing. But as soon as possible, you want to offload all non-revenue generating activities. Revenue generating activities are those activities that actually help grow the business. Maybe you're closing a sale. Maybe you're building a relationship with the referral partner. These are all revenue generating activities. Generating contracts and forms and doing busy work, that is not revenue generating. You need people processes or technology that take those things off your plate. If you want to grow a business, you have to make sure that your time is being well spent. If your time is worth $100 an hour or $250 an hour, it doesn't make sense for you to pay that for someone to generate a contract or do other administrative tasks. You're overpaying and you're cheating your business if you do that. And the last piece is to stay the course. Oftentimes with business, I watch people and it's a struggle in the beginning. You're trying to kind of get your rhythm, but it's imperative that we make sure that we stay in place long enough to see the results. If we start a business in the first two months, we're not getting the kind of traction that we had hoped for. Just closing the doors automatically ensures failure. But if you are able, financially able, we do have to be reasonable 
to continue and tweak a few things and stay the course, oftentimes it takes a little bit of time for business to become successful. People are watching you. Everyone wants to be on the winning team. So whether you're B2B or B2C, people wanna see if you're going to be around a few months from now. And once they see that you're consistent, they're usually more open to buy. Speaking about watching people and seeing if they're consistent and lasting the test of time, you're gonna notice in the description of this video, there's a link to download a future ready playbook. I created this playbook just for you and it's chock full of activities and worksheets that are going to help you be more strategic for planning your future. If you haven't already downloaded it, download it right now.